Ever since you were a child, you were told certain things aren't real. Ghosts, angels, demons, vampires, werewolves. The monster under your bed, the one in your closet. It's a comforting thing we've all been told all of our lives. But what do you do when you find out that the monster under the bed isn't so imaginary? What do you do when you find the devil is real? Sometimes, people find these things out, and that's when they come to me. Join me, Kevin Mears, Demonologist, for a look at the paranormal on my new YouTube video, Paranormal Encyclopedia. We're going to be talking about the things that go bump in the night, and why sometimes there really are such things. So we've done angels, demons, Satan, Jesus, and Jesus, and what is demonology in general. The next obvious place to go here is ghosts. Uh, we're going to talk about what the Bible says about ghosts. It's not what most Christians seem to think. And we're going to talk about ghostly appearances throughout history and things of that nature. Um, there's something I want to talk about first, though, which is welcome to the first episode of the, the end of the world. As some of you know, they just predicted the apocalypse was going to happen yesterday. Again. Um, I'm starting to lose track of how many apocalypses have apparently survived. 2000, 2012, Harold Camping's had at least a dozen. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses have had several as recently as 1970s. People keep being convinced that the world is coming to an end. Um... Nostradamus, for that matter, 1999. We're going to have a whole episode d dedicated to Nostradamus. And the reality that, no, he really didn't predict much of anything, despite what everybody believes. But, um, I... And we're going to have episodes about predicting the end of the world, about the end of the world and what that means coming down the line. But we're doing ghosts tonight. So I just want to share a really quick a verse from the book of Mark in the Bible. Um, again, I'm using the KJV. I'm going to not be using quite as many verses as I, as I have recently in this episode, but I, this illustrates really well why it's ridiculous when Christians in particular try and predict the, end, the exact day and the end of the world. So Mark 13.32 reads, But on that, of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So, this verse is talking about the end of the world. If not the, no one, not even Saint, you know, Michael the Archangel, Gabriel, not even Jesus, the Son, knows when the world is coming to an end, how can people insist they know? Um, you can't, folks. So you need to stop saying, you know when the world's going to end, you don't know. Um, it comes like a thief in the night. You want... The one, to, the one most likely thing I could say about when the world's going to end is it's not going to happen when somebody thinks it's going to happen. Because that's not the way this works. So, enough about apocalypse. Um, I also want to say very briefly, I'm based in Pennsylvania. I'm not in Philadelphia, but I'm nearby. Um, I'm happy to see the Pope is coming here to Philadelphia. I have my issues with the Catholic Church. I'm not a Catholic myself. But I do like this Pope. I like it specifically his focus on a message of redemption and hope instead of condemnation. I think um, a lot of Christians get too wrapped up in condemning and forget that we're here to save, not just to sa tell everyone they're going to hell. Um, but enough about all of that. Let's talk about ghosts. So ghosts have been with us since all of recorded history. Um... The oldest known ghost story in the modern sense is from Pliny the Younger. It talks about a, a philosopher who lived in Athens who went, was looking for a place to stay while he worked on some philosoph philosophical treaties. Um, the only house he could find for rent was reputed to be haunted. Now this is your classic ghost story. Nobody could stay there overnight. He decided, nope, I'm going to rent it, and you know what? I am a miserable enough person, perhaps the devil will find me good company. 
So he set himself. So he rented the house. He set himself up for the night, and so decided to keep himself distracted and not thinking about all these ghost stories. He would work on a particularly difficult philosophical problem. Late in the night, the door to his study opened, and an old man with wrapped in chains came in, moaning. Now, the philosopher in question ignored him. He continued to moan louder and shake the chains. Finally, the philosopher marked, you know, marked his spot, got up, and followed this ghost. The ghost led him to this little garden that was in the center of the house, pointed to a specific spot under a tree. The philosopher marked it, the ghost disappeared, and came back in the morning with men. They dug at this spot and they found the ghost's body. Not, uh, it was just a skeleton at this point, but it was wrapped in chains. So this is where we see a lot of the classic ide modern ideas of a ghost. And this is, you know, a long time ago, nearly 2,000 years. So th these ideas that we have of ghosts obviously have been around a long time. Um, the Bible talks about ghosts. Now... I, like I said, I want to talk a little bit about what the Bible says, what it really says, as opposed to what most Christians think it says about ghosts. So, a lot of Christians believe there's no such thing as ghosts, it's only demonic spirits disguising themselves as ghosts. Well, I've got three references here, um, two from 1 Samuel 28, and one from Hebrews and one from Matthew, that disagree with you. So... In 1 Samuel 28, 3-25, you find the story of the witch of Endor. Um, the King Saul, King Saul goes to the witch to try and contact the spirit of Samuel. Now, there's some debate among biblical scholars about who this spirit is, is that she contacts. But the Bible says it's Samuel. It doesn't say it's a demon in disguise. It doesn't say it's an angel in disguise. It says it's Samuel. Um, in particular, I would point you to 1 Samuel 28, 12. And the woman saw Samuel and cried in a loud voice. The woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me, for thou art Saul? And then 5, 28, 15, which says, And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? Again, it's saying it's Saul. It's not saying it's someone pretending to be Saul. It's not happy to have been summoned. You know, if we're talking about a demon, you would expect the demon to be pleased. Demons like it when you want humans to sin. They want humans to violate God's law. The spirit's unhappy about what happened. But if you keep reading, again, there's no implication that it's anyone other than Samuel. Then there's Hebrews 12.1. Wherefore, seeing me also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses... Let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which doth thou easy, easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, again, there's ways you could interpret this great cloud of witnesses, but the way I tend to see it is it's the spirits of those who have gone before us. Um, it's those we care about and we love watching over us. Uh, finally, and this is fairly direct... You have Matthew 17, 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him, him in this case being Jesus Christ. Again, the, the argument's made sometimes that this is angels in disguise. Why would angels disguise themselves as great prophets of the Old Testament? doesn't make any sense. Why would Jesus not clarify what was going on if that was the case? The Logically, it, it's spirits of those who pass i would argue that these three verses make the case that under certain circumstances god allows spirits of the dead to return now the bible does says the spirits say no nothing and i think i personally would argue that this is a reference to the idea of necromancy of contacting spirits of the dead for the purposes of divination it's the bible the bible says more than once that you shouldn't do this so I would argue that it means that there's no point in trying to summon up spirits of the dead. They don't have any special knowledge. They don't. They can't tell you the future. They can't tell you great secrets. You shouldn't summon them up. Um, 
there are many Christians who would disagree with me on these points, and that's okay, you're entitled to, but this is my stance. Um, the Bible at times implies some things about whether spirits can come back or not, but in the absence of a clear-cut verse saying, no, the dead don't ever come back, I'm going to say they do, and point to the three verses I've just discussed as evidence of why. So enough about what the Bible has to say on the subject. Let's talk about ghosts. Um, do ghosts exist? Yes. And I will say, unlike some demonologists, no, the majority of times when somebody has something weird going on, it something paranormal going on in their house, it's a ghost. Um, so what are ghosts? The, t the usual definition of a ghost is it's spirit of the dead. So, most people think of ghosts as spirits of the dead. That's usually true. It could be a couple of different things. Um, we're going to talk about the differences between ghosts and demons in a later episode because that goes into investigation. I'm going to start a whole series soon about how to conduct an investigation as well as what to do in a haunted house and things of that nature. Um, but I would argue there's a couple of different things that we all think of as ghosts that really don't qualify. Um, not counting, for that matter, spirits other than demons that are not ghosts, which is a long list and will be all episodes in and of themselves. Um, but there's a type of phenomenon that ha uh, I believe happens, and a lot of paranormal investigators believe happen, sometimes called stone memory. Or uh, The easiest way to explain it is, think of it like a recording. Um, whenever something very powerfully emotional happens in a location... It's theorized that sometimes, particularly if there's old stone there, it can record the events, then they'll start to replay. Um, it's thought this is an explanation for a lot of what we think of as haunting phenomenon. To give you an example, say you, every night at a certain time, you hear footsteps go down your hallway, down the stairs, out the door, you hear the door slam, without the door opening or closing. And that's all that ever happens. Well, is that a spirit? doing that over and over again that's one possibility but there's also a possibility that it's a memory it's for lack of a better word a memory a recording of something that happened once before maybe a very powerful fight and the person went out and get, was in an accident and died um there's an example in europe where there's a particular area road where they see soldiers walk down the roman soldiers i should say walk down the road What's odd, what's always odd about this is that their feet wouldn't be on the road, they wouldn't be floating above the road, they'd be inside of the road. Um, people did some research and realized there's an old Roman road there, further that's still there, underground and further underground, made out of granite, one of the common stones that supposedly records things like I was I'm talking about here. And again, it's not all the, a lot of things, there's no communication with these spirits, it's just the same event happening over and over and over again. Um, another real common type of thing that you get that gets associated with spirits is what's sometimes called the crisis apparition. Um, this is very interesting. You get instances where when someone's about to die or someone's in great physical distress, their, for lack of a better word, spirit appears to someone else, someone close to them. Um, this isn't haunting. They appear very briefly and then are never seen again. Um, sometimes the person, in fact, survives the situation. Uh, this could go into concepts of, like, astral projection uh, or bilocation, which is where someone appears at the same time, two places at the same time. This is commonly reported with certain saints. Um, Saint Pio, for example, was reported to appear in two places at once more on several occasions. Um, there's also visitations, um... And this is a very neat phenomenon that you'll find with reference from time to time. Particularly people in um, hospice care or ICUs tend to see stuff like this. 
where you have someone who's very seriously ill, and that person will be visited by someone. Now the staff will see the person, the person, the you know. And there's been instances where children will, rec will you know, be visited by an older gentleman, and the staff can re describe this older gentleman. They describe this to relatives of the chi very ill child, and then this confuses the relatives because the, they're describing grandpa or great grandpa, um, someone in the family, someone you often who died before the child in question was even born. The child never met them. How? How on earth are these complete strangers getting an accurate description of this person? Um, this isn't... And it, you'll get another one that will be common here uh, before I explain what it is. And is um, a lot of people, when they lose someone important to them, and I'm going to get into a story about this in a little bit, um, will have an experience with that person. Um, this can take a number of forms. Sometimes it's dreams. Sometimes they'll see somebody. Sometimes... Like in my case, it'll be just something funny that happens in in their vicinity. Um, that's very important to them who's passed away. Often enough, um, this will be a very positive experience for that person, and the person will be able to cope better and move on. Um, but they never appear. It's not a ghost in the conventional sense. They're not being haunted. They're not seeing this person over and over and over again. They see them once, and that's it. Uh, my own experience, so I've talked more than once about my friend Lou Gentili. When he died, um, I went to his funeral, of course. And now here's the thing. Like I've said before, it was important to Lou that I continue his work if he didn't make it. Um, when I was at the funeral, I did speak briefly. I spoke about how important he was to me, and I spoke about his request, and... Re, you know, reconfirmed my commitment to, to to honor his last wish to me. And while I'm talking, there's all of these can electric candles behind me. Um, people in the audience, several friends of mine, tell me that one of them, while I start to talk specifically about continuing Lou's work, starts to flicker. And then stops flickering and goes back to normal light. Well, once I'm finished, I didn't see this. I had four different people say so. Uh, now, what what's funny is this is the sort of thing we all all of us who knew Lou agreed. This is something Lou would have done. Um, he had this kind of sense of humor. Um, now, this isn't Lou haunting me. This isn't a again. It's not a ghost in the sense most people think. It's the fact that some people who have passed on to what comes next, you know, heaven, or whatever you want to see it, come back to visit the people they care about. Um, or, to, to, and sometimes just have a little fun. Um, this is a pretty common experience. A lot of people have described it over the years. And it's, not, again, it's not a ghost. It's just this visitation type of concept. It's God's way of letting people know that their loved ones are okay. Um, there are stories of this going back into ancient times. There's a f funny story I always like from Irish mythology of a woman whose father passed away. And she's grieving, grieving, grieving. She's totally distraught. And then finally, her father's spirit appears to her and s says to her, why can't you stop grieving? I cannot rest because of your tears. Um... There's a story in Grimm's Fairy Tales called Little Shroud about a woman whose child dies. Same sort of situation. Um, and keep in mind, Brothers Grimm is not a just a collection of children's stories. The two, the two brothers were folklorists collecting stories like this. Stories of things that people believe had actually happened. Um, so you see a lot of these concepts that people think of with ghosts repeated throughout history. They're not new ideas. Um, clearly, I do believe that the spirits of the dead do come back. People do, are occasionally haunted. Um, I will say on a theological level, I believe that when someone dies and goes to heaven, now specifically, I don't mean I don't mean the damned. I don't mean people that are going to hell. And yes, let's get this out of the way. As a Christian, I believe in hell. Um, I've seen ample evidence of it. And I'm going to be talking about hell in a separate episode. Um, 
but people that go to heaven, God sometimes allows them to come back to resolve things that they didn't get to resolve in life. Um, I think it's most common for people who just before, just after they die, which is why you get a lot of visitations within the first three days, and then they're never seen again. Um, and there's some occult theories about that that you generally it's thought you're given three days between when you die and when you pass over to make peace with your death or um, some other complicated things that magicians can probably explain better than I can. Um, but in general, people can come back. Um, I don't think God forces. I don't. I believe in a loving God. I don't believe in a God that forces people. To move on to heaven when they're not ready. Um, there's also some question about the nature of heaven and then hell, and but that really is what it comes down to. Uh, there are a lot. We're going to talk plenty more about ghosts. It's a common phenomenon. I don't specialize in ghost investigations just because. Um, well, for two reasons. First, when you call yourself a demonologist. When people don't call you because Casper the Friendly Ghosts is in their house. Um, as Lou, I think I've referred to before, but Lou used to put it, we're not the people you call when you hear footsteps in the hallway, we're the people you call because you're in a hotel room and you're too afraid to go home. Um, the other reason, and it's a fairly straightforward one, is my main concern is, types of, is spirits that endanger the li living. Um, ghosts usually don't do this. Um, there are poltergeists, which are an episode all into themselves, because they can be a lot of different things, not just ghosts. Um, but ghosts aren't usually a threat to the living, so what do, I, what do you need me for? You don't need an exorcism because Grandma wants to come back and visit once in a while, even assuming you could exorcise that kind of spirit. Um, there are certainly spirits of the dead that can be bothersome, and then there are th things that can be done there. But again, usually they're not the bigger problem. As, as they say, we have bigger fish to fry. Um, a quick word about the poltergeists. Uh, this is really too much of a, of a concept to discuss at the tail end of a video like this. But I want to do say a quick word about them. Poltergeist is from the German. Polter meaning noise. Geist meaning spirit or ghost, so noisy spirit. Um, it's really not one type of spirit. It's a catch-all term for a lot of different types of entity. Um, it can be ghosts. It can be demons. It can be elementals. It can be just a human in there with psychic abilities. There isn't a single thing that you can label poltergeist and say, this is all things that are poltergeist. It's, it doesn't work that way. Um, but I think this about wraps this up. Like I said, we're going to talk about poltergeist in a future episode. Uh, let me talk real quickly about some of the upcoming episodes that we have. I hopefully, um, we're working on technical details now. I'm going to be having our first guest over this weekend. Um, he's going to be a historian. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, you saw him in the panel, the four blind men in the paranormal elephant. Um, he's the gentleman dressed up in the cloak with the, the antlers. Um, he's a, he has a lot of expertise in church history. And folklore, he's a great guy. Um, I am hoping to get him on as long as we have everything ironed out. Probably filming that Sunday. Um, don't hold me to it. If that works out, he's kind of my since he's one of my best friends. He's going to be one of my guinea pig. He's going to be my guinea pig to make sure we've got everything sorted out. And if so, we've got more guests on the horizon. I'm going to start schedule. Once I have the the green line, know that that worked. We're going to start scheduling them, and hopefully, I can start announcing them. I've got some very cool people lined up. I'm going to start sending feelers out to more. Again, I'm waiting on that final get-go. Um, please, 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 please circulate the links. You know, Share them on your Facebook if you like them. Share them on your Facebook if you don't like them. Tell them, hey, look at this idiot. Um, hey, any, any publicity is good publicity, as they say. Uh, please hit like. Please hit share. Please subscribe. Please, I hate to keep playing this, but we really need to get a better camera. And we need to get better editing software. We're running. We're running currently on a non-existent budget, so please click my patron link and share. We should have a website up for the for the show soon, so that you can um, feel free as well to share qu questions, comments, and suggestions 
in the comments area below. You can also email me at kevinm.paranormalencyclopedia, all one word, at gmail.com. If you're not comfortable sharing things publicly, I would be happy to talk to you there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a good night, and happy post-apocalypse. Please enjoy your zombie fighting or tea with the four horsemen, as the case may be.